Hello there. This is a very simple WebSocket demonstration, uh, MVP, POC, minimum viable product, proof of concept, whatever you want to call it, just the bare bones. Um, I like to do this with any topic, make a YouTube video so I can reference it in the future and expand upon it. So check it out. Four clients, think of these as four different iPhones all on the same WebSocket connection. And let's say, hey, oh, what's going on? I think I just needed to reload. Yep, there we go. Needed to reload the page to make that connection because I restarted the server. So I'm going to say, hey, Luke says, hey, sup? I want to get lunch. And you can see everybody on the same connection is receiving these messages. Pretty cool stuff. So first, let's set up the server. So the server, Spring Boot, back end, and obviously front end is just Angular client. So first things first, you're going to want to go to start.spring.io, add the WebSocket dependency. Um, I also have Spring Web. I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary or not. And I like Lombok, make things easier. Generates, and then unzip that where you want it. Open the project, check out the build.gradle. We have the WebSocket dependency, which we need. So first, we're going to make a config package and a config class. I call it WebSocket config. Implement the WebSocket configure, and also make sure you add these annotations. So we're going to override this method on the interface, register WebSocket handlers registry.addHandler. We're going to create this in a second and then expose a path. We're going to say slash chat and set allowed origins to all just for development purposes. So let's check out this handler right here that we made. Set up a package handler. I'm zooming through this. So I just don't want it to be a super long video. Um, extend the text WebSocket handler and override. I'm overriding these three messages or methods after connection closed, handle text message, and after connection established. Uh, I set up this thread save variable just to hold all the sessions in it. Um, probably not something you would do in a legit or real world application, just, just for dem demonstration purposes. So after connection established, we're going to log that we create a connection and then add that session to our session, sessions variable. Um, the opposite, when we close a connection, we're going to remove that session from the sessions variable. And when we receive a message for every session that we have in this variable, we're going to loop through them and we're going to send or basically broadcast that message to all of the sessions that are connected. And that's that's it for the, the server running on port 8081. So let's start this up and then we'll test it real quick with Postman. So open up Postman, click New, go to WebSocket. Notice the protocol, WS, not HTTPS, like we are all used to. Uh, like oh, 8081 slash chat. And boom, we are connected. Let's check the logs, connection created. We get an ID, sweet. Um, let's create another connection. Second session created, and let's say something. So we received it, or we sent it, and we received it. This this client received it, and we can see it here. There's the message. Um, the reason why we're receiving it, even if we're sending it, is just because we're sending it to every session that we have, including the sender. Um, you could just say uh, if the session doesn't equal this session that id basically don't send it but whatever so it's working now let's set up the client so we can make this so i have just an angular application um i won't go into how to set up an angular application but i just have this simple chat component which is doing all the work and we have this variable ws which equals new websocket um, this constructor, we pass the URL for our WebSocket, 
Uh, this is built into JavaScript, I'm not using any fancy third-party libraries or anything like Socket.io. I haven't haven't gotten that far. I'm still just working on the the bare bones built-in stuff as much as I can. So um, let's check this out. So we can see just from that. Um, actually, jumping jumping too far ahead. ng on init. We call this method handle socket event. And we set up all these event listeners on that WebSocket variable. So on open, we receive this uh, argument and we're going to console log it. So let's check that out. So on open connection, this is the event that we're receiving and logging to the console. And see here, we can see the URL. So we can see that we have successfully created a connection. On error, we have this event listener on close and on message. On message, um, I'll talk about this in a sec. First, let's talk about let's talk about sending a message. So here is our input box right here. Um, we're just using some two-way data binding to get the value of whatever we typed in the input input box, um, passing the index because we're in a we're within a for loop, passing the index to the send method so that we can we can figure out who that text belongs to, which user. I'm not going to go too in depth into that, but I'm doing some some janky crap here. Um, disregard. But I know it's not best practice. Um, the problem was, you know, send a message. You want to see the user that sent it and the message they sent. Um, I looked into implementing it with a map where the key would be the user, the value would be the the value of what they sent. But I had some issues um, iterating over it with the ng for loop. So I'm just doing some janky stuff here. I'm using just a regular array. And the first element that gets pushed is the user. The next element is their message. So element zero, username, element one, message, element two, username, element three, their message, if you know what I'm saying. So janky, but disregard. So WebSocket variable, call the send method on it, and pass the message that you want to send. Um, we can even we can see in the back end that we're receiving those messages and logging them to the console from this method. I just realized that's protected. Interesting. Um, okay, so that's sending a message. But how are all these folks receiving the message? That's from this method. So on init, we call the handle socket events method right here. And then we set up this on message event listener on our WebSocket variable. And on message, we are console logging the message and we're calling this dot broadcast message, passes, passing it the message. And we're just pushing the message dot data, which is the, the text message itself. We're pushing that text message to this message queue variable, which we are looping over in our template. And displaying the message, ignore all this complexity. Again, it's just first element is the user, next element is the message. But we're displaying the message in our for loop. Uh, I guess the biggest, biggest concern here, though, is that all right, check it out. I just reloaded. All right, so we have one connection, right? This guy, Gar, one connection. Add client, clicked it twice. Now we have Gar, Luna, Jasper, but we still only have one connection. So, cheating a little bit, in this little example, we are actually all one connection sharing one connection these aren't separate clients 
I know it's this ad client, but they're all this is all just one big client. Um, but to show that it is legit and it works, um, we can send a message from Postman and we'll see it here. Um, oops. going on here uh this is just a weird issue i was having with uh postman where if the file's not saved sometimes it doesn't let me write more than like three characters all right this one's working so remember i said the first um element in the the list has to be the name that's why i'm doing this so mike is going to say do y'all want lunch so let's check. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> nope. Um, and we can see it here too. So we know that these are separate connections. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and just to just to prove it, clear these logs, reload. All right, connection created. That's Angular right here. Connect, and then this one's Postman. So we have two. Josh says, hey, Josh, hey, and we can see the logs. Jasper says, sup, sup. So these are actually two separate connections talking to each other with an open WebSocket connection. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I think I, think I covered everything. Thanks for watching.